There is no doubt. There is no doubt. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Orange County First Assembly. Good to see you. I'm Pastor Drew, and thank you, Pastor Adam, for a great time of worship this morning. Working so hard, he's sweating through his shirt, everybody. Let's, let's let him know we love that kind of work for Jesus. We love that kind of effort. And all of this team that's part of the uh, crew, we love them, and we are thankful for them. Amen to that. A couple announcements. You saw those, but just a couple reminders and we've got a big month coming up all the way through this month to the end of next month and beyond so we're a church of generations and so we like to minister together and we like to uh, minister have uh, opportunities for every generation so i think i saw youth you're headed for the beach saturday night yes and what a great way to kick off the school year i know a lot of you have started school already some will now in the next few weeks but Make sure you talk to Pastor Stephen and Pastor Sabrina about that. That's an annual great event for our youth. All right, so generations, let's go to the other spectrum, which is seniors. Coming up at Pinecrest, the great camp that the seniors go to the day after Labor Day. That is September 3rd. And uh, if you go on that trip, first 15 that sign up, you're going to ride in style. All the way up the mountain, you'll be the enemy. You say, what church is that? And when you get off the when you get off the van, let them know, this is Orange County First Assembly of God Church, everybody. We have arrived at Pinecrest. This is our friend Mr. Julio is bringing his van. It's a beautiful van. can carry 15 people, but you're going to need to sign up, get on that list. It's a powerful time for the seniors up in the mountains. And so make sure you sign up September 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I believe, are those dates okay and then after that as we saw it's a yard sale ladies uh, are so helpful in our church and so we guys we want to support them and we want you to come and support them and so that's the seventh good news my team i told you before we got to help the ladies at 5 a.m set up but we don't have to this year praise the lord because they're get, get, taking mercy we had a little rain last year we're being smart we're going inside the gym but our friends from Team Challenge, they'll have signs all up and down that street so you can't miss it. So, men, if you're helping me set up for the lady folk, 6 a.m., you get an extra hour of sleep. Yes, praise the Lord for that. We will take that extra hour and be a blessing to the ladies because the ladies are such a blessing to us in this church. Amen, fellas? Are the ladies a blessing to us in this church? I didn't hear a lot. Yes? Yes, they are. Yes, sir. We love the ladies in this church. And then... Uh, finally, as you saw, September 15th, we'll have our service, and then right after that service will be a pastoral vote. We do that every four years, just like the president. So make sure you come. You need to be a member for 90 days, mo at least the last 90 days, and then beyond. Most of you are that length of time. Some of you are in the queue, we say. You're not going to make this particular vote. Bless you, but you're in the queue. You'll be voting in the future, but if you've been a member of our church uh, the last 90 days at least, then come, come to service, we'll have worship, we'll have the word, we'll get ballots, and then we'll vote and we'll see what the Lord has for us for the next four years, okay? Exciting, exciting time, so make sure you don't miss September 15th is that when that will take place, okay? Praise the Lord for that. All right, no doubt is our theme, Matthew 13 is the place that we are this particular week. And so I want to talk to you today about scatter some seeds. You need to scatter some seeds. We all do. We all need to scatter some seeds for Jesus today, this week, and in the coming days. So if you'll stand with us this morning, and let's go to Matthew 13, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to have my beautiful granddaughter, Zoe, come and read this scripture to us. This, all right. I love it. I love it. We all love you. Here you go. And uh, this little lady now, freshman at high school, everybody, started high school last Tuesday. So that's pretty amazing. I'm getting older. I remember you as a baby. I, as a baby one time, they were staying with us at that time, and little baby, and it's not embarrassing. I think it's great. I see your face going, where is he going now? Where is not his grand, not your grandfather, your coach, that's my name, coach, where is he going with this now? I went in to wake her up, she's in her crib, 
I said, Zoe, we're going to church. And Zoe went, yeah, she started screaming. She was so excited about church. She didn't know what coach was saying. I don't care. Made me feel good. She wanted to go with old coach to church. And we've been together at a lot of churches and a lot of services and a lot of great memories together. Yes? Yeah. All right. We're ready for you. Matthew okay. 13, okay. first five verses. We're going to go all the way down to verse nine, as you know. Okay. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Now let me stop you there for just a second. I know it makes you nervous, but it's no offense. I want to explain something. Because some of these folks there, this is their first time here, or they're maybe new, all right, to the Christian faith. All right? So when you're saying this person that Jesus is telling this story is sewing, okay? He's not doing what my mom did, sewing dresses. <laughs> you remember my mom being here doing well, 102 years old in Texas now, but when she was here, all of those dresses, she sewed them herself. So she wore a different dress every week. When we moved her, it was a nightmare. She had all these dresses, <laughs> but she had sewed them. That's not what Zoe's talking about. That's what she's talking about is a farmer. That's the sewing. Not this. This is a needle. What is he doing up there? This is a needle. It's this, sewing seeds, okay? Let's go back to verse 4 and take it from there since I interrupted you. Okay. And if you need to see, it's close here too. Oh, yeah, If it, it is. makes it easier for okay. you. Okay. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up and they were scorched because they had no root, they withered away. And when some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. That's awesome. Good reading there. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> All right. I like your uh, friend, too. He's very good. Let's pray, but notice those last words that Jesus was saying as he told the story. He who has ears, let him hear. This is a story with a deeper meaning that we'll talk about, okay? So join me in praying for our friends, yes. all of our friends. So Jesus, thank you for a beautiful day. We've had class today and learned more about you, Lord, all of us that went to classes at 9 o'clock or so. We've worshiped you, Lord. It's a beautiful day outside, cooling down a little bit, Lord. We're thankful and for your many blessings, but we're especially thankful for you because you showed us. You not only laid your life down, but you showed us the path, what it looks like to follow you, what it looks like to get to heaven. We're thankful. It could have been a big mystery, but you kept breaking down the mysteries so men, 12 men who had not gone to college could understand the way of the kingdom and everybody else could. So Lord, bless your word. We have our ears open. We want to hear what you have to say. I'm nothing. These people certainly do not need me. They need you. We all need you, Jesus. So speak to us today. In your name, Jesus. Everybody said amen. Amen. Thank you. Let Zoe know we love her. We love all of our youth in this church. Thank you so much. Praise God. Amen. All right. So my th opening thought for you is Jesus himself spreads seeds. Jesus never tells you to do something, and he's not willing to do that. And I like to follow that motto. If I ask you to do something here around the church, if I can help, I love helping out. I just don't say to you all, okay, let's get out there. Let's serve as we did this Thursday, 344 families. Do you go and serve them, be blessed, and what a blessing that is. That's probably at least 1,680 people are eating food today because of you all and our Lord. Praise the Lord. But I don't say that. I wouldn't say that to you. I like getting in the mix. I want to be out there. I get in a position where I can talk to every single person. If they'll put their window down, it is kind of funny to me, some people, COVID, for the most part, is over, and I wouldn't be out there by them if I felt sick, but I'm out there, and I'm ready to greet them, and some will not put their windows down. They've been coming for years. That window never goes down. I'm going to one of these times knock on the window and say, put it down for just, just to see if they'll do it. No, I won't. I don't want to offend them, but some people will not put their windows down no matter what. Point is, I like to be out there with you, and Jesus himself didn't just challenge people, spread some seed. 
but also he was one who would spread the seed too. Now, I'm so impressed with Jesus, everybody. I'm sure you are too. He had to be tired when we come to this story here. Two weeks ago, we are in chapter 12, as you know, and this is a continuation from that day. Reminders about chapter 12, what we saw. He healed the man with a withered hand on that day. Then he healed a man who was blind, mute, and demon-possessed. So a man couldn't see, couldn't speak, but demons were speaking out of this man. And Jesus healed him of all those things. Then we learn in chapter 12 that the battle goes on with the Pharisees. Matthew 12, 14 says, they plotted how they might destroy him. So it wasn't just rejecting Jesus, they wanted to kill him. They made that plot. This is this day that we're looking at, and yet chapter 13, Zoe read it to us, says, it begins, it was the same day. <laughs> Jesus had done enough to go to bed on healing the sick, casting out demons, dealing with religious hypocrites. It was an amazing day for Jesus, but nothing stops Jesus. I want you to know that. He might have been tired, but he still had a mission to do. He needed to unpack the kingdom of God because still his disciples are thinking, when are you going to overthrow Rome? When are we going to take these things over? And Jesus wanted to show them, that's not my kingdom. In the very end, Jesus will rule and reign. That's still coming. That wasn't the point. I, he wanted to show us what does the kingdom of God look like. And so that's what he's doing on the same day that he had to be exhausted. Nothing stops our Lord. And I want to ask you, what stops you? What's stopping you? from obeying Jesus 100%, from following him. He would spread some seeds. We need to spread some seeds too. Now farming in 2,000 years has changed quite a lot. Oh, by the way, this verse, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. I meant to say that. So what Jesus is going to be teaching now is a parable, and this is what parables are. Throughout this chapter and other places, it's a parable an earthly story with a heavenly meeting. That's what he's doing here. Now, this big boy, this is how we farm today. Probably in the Midwest, down in the South, maybe where Pastor Adam grew up in the valley. Yeah, we see these big tractors rolling along. This is the way that we sow, let's say, seeds today okay this is a john deere tractor 9rx 640 okay to be exact you could have it you could have it today for a cool eight hundred and forty six thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars but you can get financing I'm looking at this go, you can finance this if you want. I, I don't want it. I just want the picture. That's all. I got to use this illustration. They're thinking I'm ready to buy this. Are you kidding me? No, not for $846,000 or any price anyway. But this is amazing the way that seeds and harvest and what farmers will use these days. No, that's not what Jesus was talking about in that day. No, in that day, farmers went out and they'd have some kind of a bag, right? And this is what Jesus is saying. They would have understood this because they were an agricultural society, right, culture. So if Jesus is going to talk about farming, if he's going to talk about fishing, which he does, everybody understands it. Remember, a parable is an earthly story. Oh, we get it, Lord, but it has a deeper meaning, right? And so this farmer goes out and he throws seeds out. This is how they farm. He throws it out. He knows not every seed is going to catch, is going to connect. This is important to remember that as we talk about sharing Jesus with others. They're not all going to connect, but some are. Some are going to connect. And so this is the farmer spreading seeds along the path, all right? And they understood, they understood that story, and the seed, all right, the seed is the gospel. That's what's happening there. So there are four types of soil that we see in this story that Zoe read to us today. Okay, now these first three, all right, these first three are if you're not a Christian today. You haven't accepted Jesus. By the way, if you haven't accepted Jesus, you haven't uh, figured him out, made that decision, I just want you to know up top, down low, 
you're welcome in this church. You're welcome here every Sunday. Before I got here this morning, I went running down the street, and I saw a lady that I've shared Jesus with more than once. She's a Buddhist. I invited her to church. She said, I can't come this morning, and, and it probably I should have given her more warning maybe, but she said, I can't, I can't come. But I was thinking, I'm spreading the seed, not just talking to her, but one day I was running by, and she said, she, she knows I'm pastor now here. Pastor, can you help me move some furniture? So I moved some furniture in her house. I was looking for some strong guy to help me. Nobody was around. I'm thinking, where's her husband? I don't see him. I moved some, moved some furniture, and I thought, maybe that's the seed. Maybe being nice to a Buddhist lady. Maybe that's the seed. She didn't come. I don't see her here. Didn't change her mind. I said, you've got plenty of time. There was another lady I saw I've been inviting. She's walking. She's in sweats. Made me a little late today because I just had this idea about spreading seed. I love to do it anyway. Raina and Miss Marty and, and uh, Damon and I, we spread seeds to 50 homes yesterday. Praise the Lord. Are they all going to come? Probably not. But if one of them comes, all right. We spread seeds. So I see this lady. I see her e every day. She had had surgery. She could barely walk. She's walking better now. So I turned my car around. I thought, oh, I'm running late, but i got to say something to her. i got to spread some seeds. At least i got to try. And I say to her, hey, you're looking good. You're moving better. She goes, thank you. I'm feeling better. And I said, why don't you come to church today? And she goes, like this? She's in sweats. And I said, I have a joke with all my people. She knows I'm pastor of this wonderful church. I said, as long as you're wearing clothes, you can come to our church. <laughs> That's my only rule. It doesn't matter what you wear, just cover up, right? It could be jeans, it could be a dress, it could be pants, whatever. And she said, sweat. She goes, I'm sweaty. And I said, we don't care. We have lots of space. We have balconies and things. And we don't have as much space as we used to up there. That's filling in. Praise the Lord. But spread some seeds. And so I did this morning on the way to church thinking about this. And one of these days, I anticipate those ladies and others, they're going to be coming, okay? So four types of soil. But if you haven't accepted Jesus, you're welcome here at this church. Always welcome. Number one is wayside seeds. So those are the seeds. The farmer threw them, and they go to the side like on the road. They never get into the soil, they're not going to grow. In fact, Jesus will say, even birds come along and eat those seed. No root. They don't connect. And remember, the seeds are the gospel, all right? So I, I'm going to, I think, help you with your sharing with others about Jesus today. I'm, that's my goal, to really help you have a new perspective on this, okay? And Jesus is telling us this story. It's a parable, remember. It's a heavenly message. So there's some by the wayside None of them are going to grow because they're off to the side. Number two is stony places. He would throw it, and there's some rocks there, right? And they're not going to grow because the rock. You're going to have to cultivate. You're going to have to get those rocks out. You're going to have maybe add fertilizer and water. You're going to have to do some work. But on stony places, that soil is not going to grow. That seed is not going to grow in that soil. Number three, then, is the cares of life come. Maybe you've accepted the Lord. You've wanted to walk with Him. And then life happens. You get pressure. I, as I said, I see it on Thursdays in these cars when I'm talking to people. There is a lot of people, maybe some of you dear people too, that have financial pressure. When I talk to them, I'm praying for more people than ever in these cars because I'll just say, how are you doing? Not good. How can I pray? I've got financial pressure. Thank you you have eggs. Thank you that you have milk. Thank you that you have fruit. Thank you that you have vegetables. And I say, praise the Lord. He made it happen. We're just getting it out to you all. But I see that financial pressure. I see other pressures. What's the cares of life? Now, with my own lawn in the front of our house, I'm trying to figure out what kind of soil I have there. It is so hard to take care of. I don't know if I have stony places because it's like some rocks under there or cares of life, which it, what Jesus said, it chokes it out. So if it's the weeds that are choking out my grass, I don't know. It's a battle to make it look good. It doesn't stop us. We still try to make it look as good as possible. But I understand this soil and the battle, and then I understand it deeper what Jesus is talking about. So maybe it's you. The seed hasn't taken at all in your life. Or maybe stony places, you have a hard heart. 
You're not allowing Jesus to penetrate your heart. Or maybe it's the cares of this life. It is financial. It is your job. It is your family. Maybe it's your marriage today. Whatever. Cares of life. It comes along and it chokes out these seeds that the Lord's planting in your life. But then there's the healthy soil. Praise the Lord. By the way, it's not going to work well when we share with people about Jesus one little seed. That's not a good plan, everybody. I'm just going to throw this little seed out there. And many people say, Pastor, I talked to somebody, they rejected the gospel. Folks, we don't know the 50 we saw yesterday if anybody's going to accept the gospel. But if they do, praise the Lord. One seed is not enough. That's why we spread. We spread seeds. And we're not going to stop. Not as long as I'm around, <laughs> we're not going to stop. We're going to spread seeds, all right? These are the kind of soil, on healthy soil, there are people that will receive what we have to give to them via Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. Where did I put my little clicker? Oh, right there. There it is. Too many things in my hands. All right. Jesus said this in John 6, 44, and this is big now. These are one of our takeaways today, we might say. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. This is why we throw seeds. No one comes to Jesus. It's got to be God the Father drawing them to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit's helping too. So what should we do? We just need to sow seeds. We need to plant seeds, sharing the gospel with as many people as possible. And ultimately, if they're going to come home to the Lord, and we'll see this before we're done today, it's going to be God the Father draws them to the Son, Jesus Christ. Our job, spread the seeds. Number two is check your soil today. And this is especially if you've been a Christian a day, a while, whatever you'd call yourself a Christian today. Check your soil. I want to ask you, is your soil dry? Are you like my, maybe my grass at my house? I don't know if it's dry or not. It just doesn't grow well. But is your, your life, is your life dry today? So what to do if you've been a Christian and you say, Pastor, I'm a little dry today, honestly. What do you do? Well, number one, take root. Take root, become a student of the Word. Usually people who fall away from the Lord, and I've met a lot of them, unfortunately, fall away from the Lord. I'll say, are you reading your Bible? Are you reading your Bible every day? I've never met one person yet who is on fire for Jesus, who says, I read my Bible every day. I haven't met one yet because it doesn't happen. We read our Bible, as I told you two weeks ago, we take our time, we study it, we make notes, we pray, Lord, bring this word alive in my heart. You do that, you're not going to be dry. People who get dry, they quit reading the word. Besides that, at this church, we'll help you with that take root. We've got classes Sunday morning, we've got classes Wednesday night, and we've got groups that we call growth groups all over the city throughout the month. There is no reason for you, if you come to this church, to grow dry. Not long-term dry, we all get a little dry sometimes, but not long-term if we stay close in this. You with me? This is the key. I haven't met anyone else. You're a little dry, you quit reading the Word. It just goes hand in hand. Are you coming to Bible study? You stop doing that. I've seen it every time. I see people, and when you do, when you quit coming to Bible study, I get worried about you because I think it's a good way to get dry with the Lord. And the next thing, if you're dry, you do. You pray and you worship. You start praying and say, Lord, I feel a little dry. I feel a little tired. I need some help. And so you pray and then you worship and that will help you get back on track with the Lord. And so you start feeling more alive when you pray and when you worship. So this week, I felt a little dry myself. Have a lot going on, a few battles going on. We all have battles. So I felt a little dry, and I hadn't put all these notes together, but I was just thinking about it. I was in my car. I started praying. I said, Lord, I, I feel a little dry. I love you. You're Lord. I believe you're coming back anytime. And I just need a little uh, personal revival, right? Personal revival. 
I'll listen to some good preaching myself, and then I'll put on a little worship. And so I decided, well, I'm going to worship. Now, the good news in my car is just me and Jesus. Nobody else has to hear me. Only Jesus hears me. And he doesn't care. He doesn't care that I don't sound good. He just cares, how's my heart? So I'm praying, feeling a little dry, and say, Lord, just help me with this dryness. And these words came to my mind from him. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I started feeling better. I started thinking how many times God's been good. I started thinking how many times has he bailed me out of an issue. I started thinking how many times has he given me wisdom and help. I felt better. I was probably driving better (laughs) after that. And again, yes, I'm not a singer, but I can sing to him in my car and worship him. I started feeling better. You feel a little dry, put on some worship. It doesn't matter the style. Whatever your style is, you youth can rock out. Worship Jesus when you rock out. You older adults, you can put on a hymn. Put on a hymn. But give him praise. Give him worship. He helps us. He helps get out of that dryness. And if you're in between somewhere like me where you've been alive for all these different styles and you love them all, well, then just have a good mix on your phone and put all of these on. Lord, uh, or Pastor Derek, I don't think anybody's really worshiping. If somewhere on your playlist you don't have C.C. Winans. If you don't have C.C. Winans, you need to get C.C. Winans, put her on your playlist, Try to drive careful because she's going to bless you with that voice given to her like an angel. And so, and that's one of the songs that she sings. And so, but whatever, it doesn't matter the style. If you're dry, pray and start to worship the Lord. It'll get you out of it. It'll help you. And finally, seek God first. I shared this when we were in Matthew 6. Seek God first and his righteousness and everything is added to you people have troubles when they add everything before god but you seek god first he'll help you with your marriage with your family with your finances with your work with your education mr edward and mr marquise headed to vanguard this week god's going to help you with your education what's a christian school of course he is no put god first put god first He'll help you and all the rest of us. He will help us if you seek God first. I just felt a little sad too this week because I happened to see a picture. I saw her face and I saw the heading and it was J-Lo, it was Jennifer Lopez. But, and so I didn't scroll down because I thought, I don't even know if she's wearing any clothes. I'm not going to scroll down. I keep this mind pure because I got a beautiful woman. So, But I saw her face and I saw the heading that said she has spent the summer with another man that is not her husband. And I wait, now you, I'm thinking to myself, haven't you, aren't you married to Ben Affleck? Or you were married? Or have you been married to him twice? I'm thinking about it. And you were married to A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez. And I, I just, I think this thought here, she's rich, she's beautiful, she's famous, and she's still not happy why because you seek god first you go after him first then he gives it all to you her mistake she went after everything and she's still not happy not hanging out with her husband all summer but some other guy come on everybody this is what we need to do seek god first and his righteousness and you'll have everything else all you want you won't get all you want you'd be spoiled brats so would i you get all you need You get all you need. What's the key? What's the key to life? Matthew 6, 33. Put it up somewhere in your house. Seek him first, his righteousness, and you get everything else. Oh, you also get eternal life. Praise the Lord when you seek God first. If you're dry, seek God first. So this is Death Valley, everybody. Death Valley. 
hottest place on earth ever recorded was in this valley, 134 degrees. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? A good average for them during the summer is 122, 130 like every day. You can see it's dry. You can see it's cracked. I would pray that you don't feel like your life is like that dry and needing water and needing refreshing and needing the Lord to touch you once again. But if you do, then what do you need to do about that? Well, I told you, you need to take root, read the Bible. You need to pray and worship and you need to seek God first so waters, the Holy Spirit, will roll back into your life. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So your life, your soil will be fertile once again. Number three is throw out the net. Now, this is another parable, and Jesus uses a lot of parables. I only have time for this one more. Similar, but I like it. It's a good message for us all today, and it's Matthew 13, 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a drag net, gigantic net, that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore. And they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. Oh, I was just thinking about this, folks. It is such a privilege to spread seeds, to cast the net out. What, a, what an honor I get. To do that with you all each week. What an honor I get to do it. Anybody that happens to watch. It's a privilege to spread seeds and, and, to, and to cast the net out for people who need Jesus. It's a blessing. And it's a blessing for you anytime the Lord opens an opportunity for you to share Jesus with someone else. Remember, one seed won't do a lot. It might do something. We need to spread a lot of seeds. A lot of seeds. We need to spread them. We need to cast the net out. Now, I pray you will. I pray you spread seeds this week. I pray you'll cast the net out. I have my doubts, but I believe in you. You can do it. Because only 13% of American Christians have a spiritual conversation once a week. Only 13%. What I'm encouraging you to do is to put that percentage up this week for you to share seeds this week for you to cast the net wider this week how about today you go out to a restaurant today start talking to that waitress you don't know what that waitress is going through i've talked to many over the years and it was timely they were in need and sharing jesus with them made a difference now if you're going to do that i want you to do that i encourage you if you're going out today to a restaurant Share with whoever serves you, but if you're going to share with whoever serves you, do not give them a little tip. You get me? You say, Pastor, they didn't do such a great job. We're, we're, we're representing him. We should talk about him. So we represent, oh, Jesus is so great. He would be great for your life. And you give her or him a 10% tip. We didn't represent him well. I'm glad he didn't give 10% to us. I'm glad he wasn't on the cross. So I'm done. I've suffered. Goodbye, everybody. He gave 100% of himself. He died on that cross, went in the tomb, and rose again 100%. It was what the Lord Jesus Christ could do. So we're going to share with our waitresses today. Share and give them a big tip so they know, boy, these Christians are something. They're generous. They're giving. Be nice also. My food is cold. Maybe it's cold, but be nice about it. Are you with me? 13%, not very many Christians have a spiritual conversation, and it's once a week. We should do that all the time. We need to throw out the net. We need to throw out some seeds this week. I'm so proud. My guys reminded me, and I think maybe he went up top, or maybe he went out, but David Greenwald. David Greenwald is a man who throws out the seeds, throws out the net, has flyers in his car. If he sees somebody, he invites them to church. This is good. This is a good plan. That's one of our people that more regularly is inviting people at least to the church, if not inviting them to Jesus Christ. This is what we should do. Only a few 
do that. But Jesus did it himself. We need to do that as well. So this handsome man is evangelist Luis Palau. Maybe you've heard of him. When he started, he was the translator for Billy Graham. So when Billy Graham was beginning to, or had already started, when he would go into a, a Spanish country, then he found Luis Palau, and Luis Palau would then translate the message into Spanish like we love to do around here at our, our church. So you could have one church, English and Spanish, doesn't matter, you're all together, and that's what he would do. At 86 years of age, he passed away. He, he got cancer, and, and stage four cancer is what eventually took him out. But before that, this man preached, it's estimated worldwide, to 60 billion with a B, not an M. 60 million would be great. 60 billion people heard his voice. In Spanish, speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for them. So I forgot about him, but I heard, I heard more about him this week because I wanted, to take, uh, I wanted to take Zoe on a date before we went, she went back to school this week. And I heard that Lee Strobel, you know him, the case for Christ, was speaking in Orange County. So I asked her mother, because I knew it was going to be late, but I said, I just so want to give Zoe some apologetics where you know more about Jesus and the gospel and the Bible, and you can defend your faith is what it means, so apologetics. And I knew Lee Strobel would be great because he had been an atheist, maybe you know that, and then he would write books like The Case for Christ, and it would just become radical. So I said, let's go. Can you go? Let's have a date. I'll take you to dinner, and then let's go hear Lee Strobel. And so we did. We did go and hear him, and it was a powerful time. And he knew Luis Palau. They were friends. And so he interviewed him. He wanted to interview him before he passed away. And so when he was sick with cancer, he went, and he went to interview him. And he said to, him, he said to Luis, what would be your last words? What would you want to say to people before you pass away? And Luis Palau said this, you will never regret being courageous for Christ. That's a man who shared Christ with at least 60 billion, right? You'll never regret being courageous for Christ. I'm so happy that the Lord gave me an opportunity with, a lot of us know Richard, with his nephew Adam. And I felt bad. I'm in the hospital. He's passing. I thought he, was passing. he would pass the next day, but I thought he was passing. He was losing consciousness, and I'm yelling at him because he's losing consciousness. I said, Adam, repeat this prayer. I so want you in heaven. If Jesus heals your body, praise the Lord. We'll all rejoice. But if not, I want to make sure. I've been witnessing to him for a long time, months. Adam, dying of cirrhosis of the liver at 32. So I'm yelling at all the family. Richard wasn't a Christian then. They all step out in the lobby. You've heard me talk about this before. And I said, Adam, repeat after me, Lord Jesus. And he'd wake up, Lord Jesus. And then he'd go, Adam, I'm yelling at this guy. Because I so want him to make it to heaven. And he'd wake up and he'd repeat the prayer. And I could tell he was, he was conscious. We were connecting. And in Jesus' name, amen. And then he was out again. I have no doubt that Adam's in heaven today because he would die the next day. Now, in some ways, I thought, I kind of regretted you're yelling at this poor guy, but I'm trying to wake him up enough to be conscious to make this decision. I've been talking because you're running out of time, buddy, and he was, but I have no doubt that he's in heaven. You'll never regret being courageous for Christ. Now, I have regrets of people I didn't tell them about Jesus, and I think, I should have told them. You set me up, Lord, beautifully. They were asking about the end of the world or what's going on. And usually I'm pretty good about that now. But there's sometimes I miss the opportunity that I should have shared what I know about Jesus Christ. I have regrets. I don't want any more. But we'll never regret being courageous for Christ. Worship band, why don't you come up? 
Now let's get ready to wrap up. So, I was thinking about this, folks. That why don't you all stand up with me this morning? You'll never regret being courageous for Christ. I was thinking about this. I think about what Luis Palau said before these words, some of his last words after those years of, 60 years of ministry, ministering to one billion, one billion people. And I thought, what if this is my last day to preach to you all? I'm thinking about that. Now, I hope it's not. I really want to go on the rapture. I believe that Jesus is coming back in the next 10 years or less. I want to be just shot out of here, meet him in the sky like that song said, and go up to Moses in heaven or whoever and say, I never died, buddy. I would love that. I'd love to go on the rapture. But this talk today, this sermon that we're studying about, giving out seeds, throwing the net. By the way, one last, last little side note too. It's God. Did you see that? It's the angels that gather at the end. It is not your business. They all don't have to get saved. I want them all to get saved. What's your job? We've got to spread seeds. He takes care of it. They're all not going to say, I accept Jesus Christ, Pastor Drew. Most don't. Some slam doors. They don't. What's my job? Spread seeds. Spread a big net. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. He'll take care of it. He's the one. He's sending the angels in the end, and he's going to gather the people. That's what's going to happen. But I thought about it. If this is my last sermon with you all, God forbid, and some of you thought, please, Jesus, but not me. Not me. I would say, don't wait to accept Jesus. Accept Jesus today. Don't leave these doors. You haven't accepted him. Accept him today. He's the best. And don't wait another day, including lunch today. Throw out the net today. Quit waiting. Either accept him or tell somebody else about him. Because 13% of us sharing the gospel, not very good. More of us. More of us. We've got to get the seeds out. We've got to throw the net. Then let Jesus and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit touch the heart. Amen. Don't leave here without making that commitment to Jesus Christ. Anyone here who would like to accept him as your Lord and Savior or you'd like to come back to him, this is your day. This is the moment. Why wait another day? This is what Jesus was saying. Why wait? Get right with him today. Don't leave this place the same way that you were. Let that seed get into that fertile soil and let it start growing and we'll help it grow we'll water it we'll come alongside we'll help that seed in your life grow this church well we're committed to that we just don't say you accepted jesus good job good luck no we go on a journey with you we're all on this journey to heaven together anybody raise their hand and say i would like to pray i i i I see those hands I see those hands. Who else would raise a hand and say, I, I see that hand? The Bible even says today is the day of salvation. So it's not like I'm saying this pastor's crazy. It's biblical. But read it. Check me out. It's okay. I don't mind. I love that, actually. Anybody else would raise their hand and say, I either need to accept him or I've walked away from him and I need to come back to him. Spread the seeds today. Now it's up to you and the home. I see that hand. Thank you. Spreading the seeds. It's up to you and the Holy Spirit and the Father and Jesus to make that seed catch. That's the plan. Let's pray this morning. Let's all pray. You love Jesus. Make sure you pray with me nice and loud. It will make it easier for someone. And then we'll worship and then we'll pray maybe for some souls today that are a little dry. Maybe you've gotten a little dry today. We'd love to pray for you today that the Holy Spirit water, let's say rivers of living water will flow back into your life. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Lord Jesus, I'm coming to you. I want you. I believe 
you're the only way to heaven. I believe you're the Savior of the world. I want this. I want you. I ask you to remove every sin, every mistake. I believe you are the Savior of the world. And now you're my Savior forever. In your name, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. That's why we're here. You raise your hand, let me know. You didn't raise your hand, let me know. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure. Can I come back to this church? I'm not a Christian. Come back to this church. Everybody can come here. What do you think I'm inviting on Sunday morning Buddhists to come to our church? And they say, you're a crazy Christian. I said, come and check out, compare Buddha to Jesus. Because I know that anybody that will actually do that with an open heart, there's no comparison to the Lord Jesus Christ. But everybody's welcome in this church. Because they need to experience you, Lord Jesus. So let's worship. And then if you're dry, you got a need, our prayer partners will come. We'd love to hang out and pray with you today, all right? God bless you. Throw some seeds. Throw the net even today. Hey, OCFA family, thank you for joining us for Church Online. If you receive Christ today, would you let us know? We would love to connect with you and pray with you. You can also connect with us on our social media pages, on Facebook and Instagram at OC First Assembly. We'd also love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out some of our past videos. Thank you again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.